Welcome to Kennesaw, Georgia, home of Wintech, a precision machine shop that's as dedicated to machining as it is its mission. Veterans who first time offenders, if they can get into the program, it's roughly a two year program. It's a pretty intense process that they go through, but then when they graduate, their record's expunged. Inside, you'll see how this veteran and female co-owned company produces aerospace and defense parts with the security standards to match, including level two CMMC compliance. We talked to Dennis and said, you know, we want raises and here's why, and we gave him justification, and Dennis agreed, and he said, okay, I'll give you your raise. And John said, no, I want Allison to make what I make. No duh, I go into business with somebody like this, you know. But what really sets WinTech apart? Their award-winning approach to people. Named a 2025 Top Shops honoree in human resources, WinTech opens the door for the next generation of machinists and gives second chances through programs like Cobb County's Veterans Treatment Court. Stick with us as we explore the technology, the culture, and the leadership that make WinTech one of the most distinctive shops we've seen. So, welcome to Wintech. Thank you. This is the uh, shop floor. Behind you here is what we call the fishbowl. That's where the guys will go in and do all their programming. Well, our shop floor is laid out with uh, all the majority of our NCs are up here as well as our manual machine. In the middle of the shop, which you'll see, that's going to be our QC. And then down on the bottom side, that's going to be more of our fab, weld, water jet area. Up here, we have both horizontal and vertical NC mills. And just generally, what, what kind of materials are you guys handling on a day-to-day? I make a joke, we'll cut anything from acetyl to zinc. And the, the markets that you're serving, the industries that you're serving, primarily defense, aerospace? Aerospace, if the customer's willing to pay us to make their parts, we'll be happy to make them. Right. <laughs> That's what it boils down to. Dennis Winslow started the company in 1988. She was probably 13. That's probably the first time I met her and she came in here to do our uh, website. I lived next door to Dennis and his wife at the time. I came in 2006 because I was working for a big corporation in downtown Atlanta, got passed up for promotion, called my dad crying, I said I want to quit my job. He said, you can't quit your job until you find a new one. So I called Dennis and said, I want to come work for you. And he said, you don't know what I do. And so I came in for an interview and he slid the number across the table from me, it was in that office, and it was 30% less than what I was making slid it across and he said, I know it's not what you expect, but if you trust me, you could run the place one day. We have a good variety of sizes of machines. This one here is our biggest. I got roughly 56 inch by 86 inch table on that one. So that's my biggest one. I don't have anything currently on it, but a lot of times we'll take and set sheets up there and we can actually machine the parts out of the whole sheet. And then they're ready to go. I guess the biggest part we've ever made on that is probably about 110 inches long. It was a big plate that went on a, a table. When, when I interviewed with Dennis, he's like, well, where, where do you want to be? I was like, I want your chair. And it's funny because the day we bought the company, Allison and I bought the company, he had actually already cleared out that office in there. and. He's like, all right, come here. I want a picture of this. What year was that? We, 2020. 2020. 2020. Okay. During the pandemic. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, we're not the smartest no, people. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, still in our manual tool shop, I guess, we have uh, jig grind capability, ID grind, OD grind, jig uh, surface grind, as well as honing. Obviously, you guys um, won the 2025 Top Shops Award uh, in the category of HR and workforce. As far as your hiring strategies go, um, you have outreach programs to uh, recently incarcerated, uh, obviously to local tech schools. The veterans program is very interesting. We have uh, two guys that are going through the veterans program right now that work for us. If they can get into the program, it's roughly a two-year program. They have to go to court. Every week, they have to check in with their uh, mentors every week. They have assignments that are given to them by the judge. Pretty intense process that they go through, but then when they graduate, their, their record's expunged. I love that program, so uh, that's the reason. It's near and dear to my heart. Well, 
and a graduation ceremony will is life changing. Yes, yes. I mean, being former military, I can tell you this: you go to you go to base, you learn all these skills, how to be a, a, a soldier, a sailor, a marine. I, I don't care. You you learn this, and it's it's ingrained into you. Monday through Friday, or if you're deployed overseas, it's seven days a week. You got someone telling you what to do, when to do it, where to do it, what you're going to wear. I don't think there's enough transition time. They, they've started getting better with this, transitioning these folks out of the military because you got to decompress these people. I mean, don't get me wrong, they can function on their own. They, they, they can go take care of any business they need that they've been trained to take care of. But what they don't have is that coming home and being able to dinner, interact with all the different realities that hit them in civilian life. So they find themselves doing things that they typically wouldn't have done because they're not, they, they haven't had that time to adapt. This is somewhat of a challenging part. Um, it plus one, minus two on the slot tolerances and the depths are plus or minus a thou, I think. But cutting all that over that distance and keeping it flat within the thou that they're wanting, that makes it, a, makes it a brutal part. And you've got to have really a, 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 a rigid fixturing for this, right? Correct. And that's just the end mill work on that alone is, is crazy. And funny thing is, is they were using a, I don't know, a 50 thou end mill. And he was doing 10 thou cuts and he kept breaking tools, 10 thou deep. Well, he went to 20 and it just started running like clockwork. Huh. So instead of taking, you know, most people, oh, take less. No, he took more because his tool got in there and he wasn't having the harmonics build up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was actually cutting instead of. We're both involved with the Chattahoochee Technical College, local yes. technical college, and we've both been involved with them for years. Uh, there's a wonderful professor over there that students really respect and John's on their like advisory board. I've been on their board of trustees for their foundation. And for years we kept saying, you know, it's great because the students love that professor and it's great to have young adults excited about manufacturing, but where do those, where do those kids come from? You know, the high schools, they're not, if they're not teaching manufacturing, where's the pipeline? And so we started pushing and kicking and pitching fits to, to Everybody high schools, and I would listen. get, I would pretty much, I got uninvited back to a school board meeting because I wouldn't shut up. Um, and finally, next thing you know, now they're building a, what they're calling a Cobb Innovation Technology Academy down the street. And it's going to include a manufacturing pipeline, or manufacturing pathway um, for high school students. I don't know that we sought out some sort of, hey, we're gonna try to be the best at HR. Mm -hmm. I think we just kind of always knew if we can get the right people. I mean, like we've got, we've got a really good management team. Jimmy, Mark, and Rose are a management team. They're all very different. Okay. And they're very good at what they do. They, they give a damn. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to find, I think, anywhere. Okay. And I think if you can find leaders that care, and then I think if you can find people ready to learn and ready to admit when, oops, I messed up this part and I want to know why. I think that's 80% of the problem, right? I think then you're you're on the right track to getting somewhere. Compliance on the CMC, CMMC side. Um, oh, okay, all right. So Allison, you've kind of led that effort. Yeah, what has it been like and what did you have to do, especially on the shop floor to make it happen? The CMMC piece to us has been a very tough road, but um, finding somebody who knew what they were doing was really key in all of this and the baby steps. I mean, we've been doing this for six, seven years and just bit by bit, knowing that it wasn't something we needed to, okay, we need to gather all this documentation overnight. It was bit by bit, it was figuring out budget wise, okay, if we altered this, would it make our lives easier? Could people, you know, follow the rules easier if we did it this way? How much is this gonna cost us? Do you want to name who helped sure. you Sure, Sentinel Blue. Sentinel Blue, Andy Sauer and his team, phenomenal. So we did not do an, a, a traditional gap assessment okay. because the traditional gap assessment, we felt we were already doing all along. 
Um, from what I understand out in the marketplace, those are costing anywhere from 20,000 to 50,000 for a small business. So it kind of depends on your environment. Um, we have, you know, some of the small business challenges, I think, you know, in our environment are things like some of these machines, you, know, you have an option. You can, you can connect them all to the internet and then they all, what they say, become in scope because you've got them on your network. She's been asked to speak several different places on this and one of them was pretty cool. Yeah, we uh, got invited to the Pentagon, wow. sat down with Under Secretary of Defense wow. to go through some kind of real life examples of how this would affect us. And wow. I helped to co-write a um, risk management strategies in small business environment and how it would affect and got told that that was apparently making the rounds at the Pentagon. So it's it's nice to hear. I, I get pinged now and then from some friends at the Pentagon. Now now I call them friends. Some friends at the Pentagon that say, you know, hey, we're watching your LinkedIn posts. You know, keep up the small business beat of the drum. To people who are stumbling on videos like this through recommendations on YouTube, um, how do you talk about what you do and why it matters and why it's important? Like, why should anybody care like what you guys are doing? Because they get to sleep quietly in their bed and not have to worry about, you know, 99.9% .9 of the population in the United States. They don't have to worry about the government kicking in their door and dragging them off somewhere. And that, that's because of the war fighters. That's because of our, our soldiers, our sailors, Marines, Air Force, you know, it, that's why. And that's the majority of what we do here goes to support our war fighters. I think manufacturing in general too. I think you, you always put it really well that manufacturing is a career for somebody to think about. If you learn how to make a part, how to run a machine, you'll never ever be looking for a job. You'll always have a skill. And that's any skilled trade. I don't care if you're an electrician, plumber. If you, if you learn a skilled trade, you can go anywhere in this country and most other countries and make a living for yourself and your family. Hey everybody, Brent Donaldson with Modern Machine Shop here, and if you just watched that video and you're thinking, boy, I'd like my shop to be featured in the View for My Shop series, then just send us an email at shopvideo at mmsonline.com and tell us what sets your shop apart.